my channel and welcome to part three, part three, I almost forgot, of this acne series. So if you missed part one and part two, I do recommend watching them because they kind of all go hand in hand. The first one is very special to me. It's a very personal video. I talk more about the emotional side of having acne and part two is all about lifestyle. So I talk about the five lifestyle habits that helped me in my journey to clear skin. So if you still haven't seen those, I'll have them linked in this corner, I believe, and also in the description box below. Now, in the last video, I did mention how acne is not all about skincare products, but skincare is still a piece to this acne puzzle. So for the last video in the series, I want to share the eight products that I found the most helpful and that I give credit to in helping me clear my skin. Now, this is not a step-by-step -step skincare routine. I'm not saying that I used all of these products at once or all at one time. These are products that helped me along the way and that I still use. Some of them I'll use daily, some of them I'll use weekly. The truth is I'm always switching up my skincare routine, but this is like the group of products that I will rotate and choose from. So let's go ahead and get started. So I wanna start off with what my go-to cleanser was for many years. This is what I would use every morning and night. So this is a tea tree face wash. Tea tree is known for its antibacterial, for its anti-inflammatory properties, and that's why it's so popular for acne prone skin. I especially like using tea tree during the hotter months because it does help control excess oil on the skin. So if you do have oily skin, tea tree can help with that. I used to use the one by the body shop. If you watched any of my older videos, you probably remember that. But one day I was looking at the ingredients and I realized that they're not very natural. I didn't like some of the ingredients it had, so I stopped using that one. And now I use this one by Desert Essence. And honestly, this is one of the best formulas that I have come across when it comes to tea tree facial cleansers. Aside from tea tree, it also has chamomile, lavender, neem seed oil, so just a lot of really good ingredients. And I love how gentle this one is. It deep cleanses my skin without stripping it, so I don't get that tight, dry, stretchy skin feeling. And this one is super affordable. It's a 32 ounce bottle for only around $15. So I feel like it's a really good deal. The bottle is pretty big, but you can always pour this into a smaller container, like a smaller travel size bottle. And all I need is like one or two drops and that's enough for me to work up a really good lather. If you're an older subscriber, this one should come as no surprise. This is my favorite. This is the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay Mask, the shorter version, bentonite clay. I love this stuff. It's my favorite way of detoxing my skin. It's really good for unclogging pores. And if I had to pick the best face mask, in my opinion, the best mask for acne, it would be this one hands down. It works by bonding to toxins. It brings them to the surface of the skin and that's how it eliminates them. So if you've never used bentonite clay before, things will probably get worse before they get better. You will probably see more pimples coming out, but that's all part of the process. And in my experience, this clay really helped to speed up the whole acne healing process because especially with cystic acne, it seems like it's gonna be on your face forever but when I started using this, I noticed that it healed much quicker. And I just love how I can actually feel this working on my skin. So you mix this with a little bit of water or apple cider vinegar, and once you apply that layer on your face and it starts to dry, you will feel this pulsate, kind of like a heartbeat. I don't necessarily feel this all over my face, but I do feel it in those problematic areas which for me right now is around my chin and along my jawline. So I think it's really cool how I can actually feel this working. Right now I use this maybe once or twice a week, just depending on how my skin looks and feels. But whenever I was dealing with acne, I was using this a lot more frequently. So next is the Thayer's Rose Petal Witch Hazel Toner. And I found that adding a toner into my skincare routine really did make a big difference in my skin because toners help to balance the skin's pH and control oil production, which is super important when you're dealing with acne. And I've been using this toner for a really long time. I wanna say over 10 years. I started using this way before it became popular. I remember you could only find this at like real 
natural health food stores but now I see it being sold everywhere. I've even seen this at Ulta, so it's definitely become more mainstream. I don't know if any of y'all remember the original packaging. I loved that one because I felt like it gave it a more natural vibe. But anyways, I love this toner. It's alcohol free, so it's not gonna dry out your skin. It leaves my skin feeling really soft and moisturized. And that's why for many years, I didn't even use a moisturizer because I felt like this did everything for me. And all I do is I pour some onto a cotton round, wipe that all over my face every morning and night after cleansing. So next up is African Black Soap. Now this is a more recent skincare discovery of mine. I started using this like a year or a year and a half ago, but it quickly became one of my favorite facial cleansers. And I'm talking about real, authentic African black soap. Don't be fooled by the one that you see at Target or at TJ Maxx, I've also seen it there. Authentic African black soap does not look like your typical bar of soap. The real one is malleable, it's chunky, and it's usually sold by the pound. It's made from completely natural ingredients like plantain skin ash, cocoa pods, shea butter, so it's definitely not the one that you see at Target or TJ Maxx. And when you're looking at it for the first time, it does look very unique. It looks completely different from, you know, what we usually envision a soap to look like. So the one I buy comes in a huge block. This one is actually more than halfway done. But what I like to do is I just slice it into smaller pieces and then I take one of those pieces with me to the bathroom. And the reason this became one of my favorite soaps is because just within one week of me using this, I noticed a significant difference in my skin. It was a lot softer, there was less texture, and the hyperpigmentation that I had, I noticed that it started to fade. So I was really impressed. Now I have heard that some people don't have such positive experiences with this soap, but I feel like it has everything to do with the way that you use it. So with the soap, you want your skin to slowly get used to it. And the soap that I buy comes with a guideline and it tells you how to use the soap week by week. So I followed that guideline word for word. And for the first week, it recommends to not leave this soap on your face for more than five seconds, which did scare me at first, but I followed that, I followed the directions and I would count one, two, three, four, five, and I would immediately wash my face. And I did that for the entire first week. And then the second week, you can increase it to 10 seconds. I did that week after week. And like I said, it's just about letting your skin get used to the soap. So if you are interested in using the soap, I would recommend for you to follow the directions, do what the guideline says, and also follow up with a really good moisturizer. So when I'm using African black soap as my cleanser, I like to use shea butter. So if you do that, I feel like your experience shouldn't be bad. Next up is the Pumpkin Enzyme Mask by Banish. This is another one of my favorites. I currently use this one like two or three times a week. It's my favorite way to exfoliate, and it's really great for acne prone skin and for hyperpigmentation. So it helps with all of that redness. I love that it only has natural ingredients. It's formulated with natural pumpkin enzymes, alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid. So it's a very natural and gentle way of exfoliating the skin without any harsh scrubbing. And I feel like a good skincare routine should include some kind of exfoliation because you want to get rid of those dead skin cells to help prevent bacteria, dirt, or sweat from clogging the pores. So this is what I use. And when you apply this, you will feel like a mild burning sensation, but it's completely normal. It's just the enzymes that are getting in there and doing their job. And I'm sharing this because the very first time that I used this, I was freaking out because it just felt like it was burning my skin. And I thought that I did something wrong, but I'm just telling you, it's completely normal. And the sensation only lasts like five or 10 seconds. So you just kind of breathe through it and you'll be okay. And then after I wash this off, my skin instantly looks brighter and it just has a more natural, healthy glow to it. So I really love this. Manuka honey is also one of my more recent skincare discoveries. Well, it's technically not a skincare product, but it has amazing skincare benefits. So this type of honey is native to New Zealand. It's, I like to think of it like the queen of all honeys because it's really powerful. It's antibacterial, it has anti-inflammatory properties. So it's amazing for acne prone skin. 
And for me, it's kind of like a two in one because it fights acne, but at the same time, it works on healing that hyperpigmentation that's left after pimples are gone. All of that redness, it helps with all of that. And then you know how cystic acne can be very painful. Your skin just feels really irritated. And I have always found that honey is very soothing and very calming to the skin. So what I like to do is I apply a thin layer of this all over my face and then I kind of just forget about it. I leave it on my skin for an indefinite amount of time while I do other stuff around the house. And afterward, my skin is glowing, it feels less irritated, and it's left feeling really moisturized. One of the mistakes I made when I was dealing with acne is that I didn't use a moisturizer. I just felt like if I applied any kind of moisturizer on my skin, it would clog the pores and cause even more acne. But in reality, it does the total opposite because it kind of creates this vicious cycle where your skin is trying to compensate for the lack of moisture on your skin. So it starts to produce more oil and more oil leads to a higher risk of getting pimples. So it does the opposite of what we want. And another reason why I would stay away from moisturizers is because I felt like they were all too heavy. But then one day I came across jojoba oil and I know that applying oil to your skin might sound counterintuitive, but jojoba oil actually resembles our skin's own sebum. So it kind of sends a signal to the skin that enough oil has been produced so it stops producing the excess oil. And for that reason, I feel like this is a really great moisturizer for all skin types, but particularly for acne prone and oily skin. I've been using this for many years now and all I need is like two or three drops of this and that's enough to cover my entire face. This is also one of my favorite ways of removing makeup. It gets rid of even the most stubborn mascara or eyeliner and the added bonus is that it leaves your skin feeling moisturized. So once I was able to finally clear my acne, I was left with a lot of hyperpigmentation and scars. So what I used and continue to use for that is the Banish Roller and more recently the Banisher 2.0. So both of these products are at-home micro needling treatments and how they work is they have tiny micro needles and when you roll this onto the skin, it creates microscopic holes. So you're essentially causing trauma, you're causing damage to the skin but that's what sends the signal to the brain that your skin needs to be repaired. So more collagen is produced and that's how the scars are healed. And I have an entire video where I go in depth and talk about both of these products. So if you want to learn more about them, I'll leave them in the description box below. But I just wanted to mention them here because these helped me a lot when it came to hyperpigmentation and all of that redness that's left after your acne has healed. All right, so those are the top eight skincare products that I give credit to in helping me clear my skin. And as you can see, I have a love for natural skincare products. I really like using products that don't contain too many ingredients. And for me, simple and natural is the best way to go. So I hope you find my recommendations helpful. And with this video being the last video in this series, I have officially put out all the tools, all the tips and information that helped me in my journey to clear skin. And this is information that I would have loved to have very early on when I first started getting acne. It would have saved me so much trouble. So I hope my story, my experience makes your journey a little bit easier. That's my goal with all of this. So I wish you all the best in your journey and I will see you next time. Bye.